Blue Angels are at Fallon, and we are ready for takeoff. I'm John Sasaki. We'll have that fast, rocky ride in just a minute. John, kind of a repeat of last night, but we have finality this evening, John, and it feels good. A repeat of last night, but multiplied by about a thousand. Take a look at Chestnut Street. This place is going crazy. Traffic has stopped. They're blocking the. They're blocking all the traffic. People are getting out of their cars. Buses are stopping. Fire engines passing by, lighting it up with their lights and their sirens. Everybody here is celebrating. Hundreds and hundreds of people are here on Chestnut Street right now. It, it is utter pandemonium. This is a moment that these people, some not so long, but a lot of people waiting decades, literally, to experience this moment. I'm joined right now by Barbara Gilmore. Barbara Gilmore right here is the granddaughter of Angelo Rossi, the former mayor of San Francisco. Tomorrow is her 80th birthday, and she, in 1958, when the Giants arrived from New York, rode in the parade celebrating their arrival. Barbara, you've been waiting for this for a very long time. Yeah. Tell me what this yeah. feels like. I think it's great that these boys pulled it out at the, all through torture, torture, through all the things, and I'm so proud of them because I've been a Giants fan ever since they came here. What would your grandfather, Angelo Rossi, the former mayor, be saying about all this here? He would be so proud because we didn't have a, a national baseball team when he was mayor. We had the San Francisco Seals who were his pride, but that, that was low key compared to this. Okay, all right. Barbara, thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. You. Congratulations to you. This is a moment that everybody here has been waiting for, and you're going to hear it many, many times, but I have to say it as well. The San Francisco Giants are the World Series champions. Live in San Francisco, I'm John Sasaki, KTVU, Channel 2 News. That's absolutely true. 800-539-8034. Give us a call right now. A lot of great people here just waiting to hear from you. Take your money. 800-539-8034. Now, some of the people who year-round are doing really important work on the ground in the Bay Area, they're saving lives every day. They're the firefighters. We couldn't do all of that we do without the firefighters. And this year, these firefighters in the Contra Costa County Fire Protection District out there in Contra Costa County doing a great job every day saving lives. All right. But they're also fill in the boot. Aren't you filling the boot? Vince Wells from Contra Costa County Fire Protection District. Is that right? What, what are you doing out there? We're filling the boot. All right. And I know that this year you had three different locations you were working. We had Pleasant Hill going on. This was at the corner of Willow Pass and Contra Costa right by Sun Valley Mall. Look at them waving the signs, getting people to donate. They're, yeah, they are running into traffic. These guys like to live dangerously. They do indeed. And then, of course, they had Walnut Creek going on too. Now, this was at California and Ignacio Valley. That was a great day out there, kind of a little overcast, but these firefighters were doing the hard work, jumping in and out of moving traffic, trying to avoid getting, look at that, you know, running with the moving vehicles. What are you doing right there? All right, and then out in Brentwood, I understand Brentwood, this is a, uh, a photo of all the folks out there in Brentwood. You had a couple of locations there, and that was your biggest fundraising location, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Vince? Yes, it was, but I wanted to add that we actually had a couple of other intersections. We had an intersection out in Moraga, Arenda, and actually in Moraga one day and in Arinda, city of Arinda the next. And then we did uh, Pinole, the city of Pinole, and also the city of El Cerrito. All right. Now, now, what would you raise? What, two grand, three grand? <laughs> Amazingly, in this economy, we were able to raise $61,442. My goodness, $61,442. These are the firefighters saving your lives, putting out the fires at your house, coming to help you if you have a heart attack. But you guys are still on your own time doing this, raising money for MDA. Why do you do it? Uh, it's a cause that uh, our firefighters have been involved with uh, the MDA for 25 years, and it's just a great relationship we had. We had the opportunity to meet a lot of the families and the kids that were helping, and, and that just keeps us motivated. We appreciate Contra Cross County Fire Protection District. You guys are great. October 2nd, I'm going to be out there learning how to be a firefighter with you guys, too. Looking forward to that event as well. Thank you so much for being here. Give it up for all these guys from the Contra Cross County Fire Protection District. $61,000 is amazing. Thanks again. Tommy. Stand by. Stand by. Oh. Altitude. Altitude. A South Bay family has filed a lawsuit against the nation's largest youth soccer organization. 
The suit stems from the child sex abuse conviction of a volunteer coach, Emmanuel Fabrizio. Authorities say he sexually abused a 13-year-old girl while volunteering for a local affiliate of the U.S. Youth Soccer League. The Mercury News reports the lawsuit accuses the league of negligence, saying it failed to require background checks. Fabrizio was sentenced to 15 years in prison after pleading guilty. Now to our continuing coverage of Monday's oil tanker crash into a Bay Bridge tower. That tanker has now left the bay. News Chopper 2 was there as the overseas Raymar left around 10 a.m. It had been anchored in the bay since that crash. The Coast Guard gave it clearance to leave after completing interviews, evidence collection, and a thorough safety inspection. The tanker will need repairs before returning to service. The Coast Guard says its investigation into the cause of that crash may take several months. The highly touted Boeing 787 Dreamliner jet has come to Mineta San Jose Airport. It landed and took off this morning on the same day that federal officials announced they'll be conducting a major review of the plane's design and assembly processes. KTV's Janine De La Vega joins us live from the airport where she has details about those safety concerns. Janine. Well, I got the Channel 10 Fox television man on the ground. To help me give you the real feeling of what being a bullfighter is like, I put on the makeup. Well, you're about right donned the outfit and stepped into the ring, leaving my senses behind. If you take a close look, you can see a camera on top of my hat. I wore it even though the clowns had their doubts about what you'd see in the video. <laughs> Lord, I don't know. <laughs> they love to see the underneath the bull's belly. But it worked, and here's that spill again from the bullfighter's perspective. That was Scott Webb who slammed into me, and this is what he says goes through his mind at times like that. If the bull's really running hard at me, the main thing I'm thinking about is just wait on him and, and just and just break at the right time. And you know, because timing's everything in this business, and if you're off a, a half a step, they're gonna, you're going to pay for it. <laughs> Obviously, our timing was a bit off, and we paid for it. The number is 800-539-8034. It is so easy. It takes no time at all. We take your address, your name, your, your credit card number, and right there, you're done. So give us a call, 800-539. It feels good. It'll make your day, I promise you. Now, throughout this telethon, we'll continue to introduce you to some inspirational people from all over the Bay Area. Now, these people share stories of courage, hope, and triumph. During this broadcast, we'll show you just how the money you pledge is used to benefit people coping with destructive neuromus neuromuscular diseases by giving them medical services and the emotional support they need to get on with their lives at work, at school, and with their families. Today is your chance to give of yourself and provide help and hope for these amazing people. As you share this broadcast with your family, please make your pledge for 25, 50, 100, however much you want to give. Now is a great time to pick up the phone and call the number you see on the screen. That's 800-539-8034. Telephone operators, all these volunteers are standing by ready to take your call. Channel 2 broadcast of the MDA Telethon will continue until 5 p.m., so we are here all day. Please call 800-539-8034. Gracias. This is rappelling off the Grand Hyatt Hotel in San Francisco, 38 stories, 429 feet. I figure my job has been one that's allowed me to do all kinds of kind of crazy things. I've flown with the Blue Angels. I've, I've uh, learned how to be a rodeo clown in a real rodeo. Mm -hmm. This is something else. This is something entirely different. A lot of people aren't too excited about doing this. This is kind of scary. The event benefits the Northern California Special Olympics. And KTVU reporter John Sasaki, there he is right there, was one of those who rappelled down the side of the building. Very slowly, it looks like. If you want to see more of this repelling, it will continue tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. We have some sad news to report. One of the famous San Francisco twins has died. Vivian Brown passed away Wednesday night. She and her sister Marion were icons of San Francisco. The twins made their daily rounds of Knob Hill and Union Square with their signature matching outfits, smiling and posing for pictures with tourists. They moved to San Francisco from Michigan in 1970. They would have celebrated their 86th birthday together on the 25th of this month. A public memorial for the Petaluma teenager who died after a New Year's Eve party in South Lake Tahoe is set for tomorrow. The body of 19-year-old Alyssa Byrne was found behind a snowbank one week ago. The memorial will take place in the Casa Grande High School gym in Petaluma. That is Byrne's alma mater. The Byrne family is asking everyone to wear pink, which was Alyssa's favorite color.